ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the author of The Filter Bubble, Bubble and TED Talk expert, Eli Pariser, co-founder of Upworthy. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Hi, everybody. I'm Eli. I'm not going to make you touch each other, I promise. Uh, I'm going to talk for about seven minutes. And uh, during these seven minutes, uh, over a month's worth of content is going to be uploaded to YouTube. More than 600 websites are going to go live. Uh, and uh, you know, we're going to see that uh, you know, just piles of content comes onto the internet. Um, Chartbeat says that over 28 articles could be skimmed in about seven minutes. So it's become a truism that our greatest natural resource these days isn't gold or oil, it's attention. You know, the amount of things to pay attention to just keeps getting bigger, and the amount of attention that we each have to give stays constant. And so, uh, you know, what that means for all of us is that if you want to get your content uh, in front of people, it's becoming harder not at a linear rate, but at an exponential rate. And that's one of the reasons that social is becoming so important. Because you know, we're really kind of at this tipping point where uh, social is becoming the way that people get exposed to content. And the reason for that is quite simple, which is that you know, a wash in this sea of content, people need some kind of life raft. And that life raft is their friends or their colleagues, someone saying, hey, this is worth paying attention to. And so if you want to get uh, people to, to pay attention, if you want to win the war for attention, uh, then you need to provide them with content that they care enough to tune into and to share with their friends. So what I want to talk about today is a kind of different new take on what makes people share, that kind of critical question that all of us spend so much time thinking about. And what we know about sharing is that uh, it's a lot about identity formation. It's about ex expressing a certain part of yourself, uh, forming your social self through the things that you share. And the temptation uh, in identity formation is to resort to kind of a lowest common denominator self one that kind of pleases and amuses everyone without actually saying anything. And so there's a lot of demand for you know, the, the classic viral content, the video of uh, you know, some kid jumping on his bed and falling out the window, because it expresses that you know, lowest common denominator self. But especially in this context, when you can actually kind of plant a, a flag, when you say, here's what I care about, or here's what I believe in, and when you kind of overcome your fear and express uh, what you really think, it's incredibly powerful. And what we've seen is that purpose and passion can drive a whole different kind of sharing, and that people really respond in a whole different way. And we see this not just with our content, uh, but with brand content as well. You know, we heard earlier from, uh, you know, from CVS, and people react to that kind of announcement, to a company actually taking the step of pulling its cigarettes off, off the shelves in a very different way. It's, it's something authentic, it's something real, and it speaks to something much bigger and stands out in this kind of sea in, of inanity. And so, uh, you know, you can see this actually even in, uh, you know, the Super Bowl commercials that, that we've seen uh, this last year. You know, if you compare uh, this pretty funny, you know, but fairly standard GoDaddy commercial to the Coke commercial, uh, you know, both of them got a seed audience of 100 million people pretty good. But the online activity around that Coke commercial was totally different. And that was because it actually struck a chord. It was a little bit edgy. But it was a company actually standing up and saying, this is the kind of America that we believe in. That broke through. And it also spoke to this kind of rising new audience of people with a different set of values. You know, people who don't just care about conspicuous consumption, but also about conspicuous alt altruism. People who actually you know, want to demonstrate that they're interested in buying products and, and doing things that make the world a better place. And if you can tap into that, it's incredibly powerful. So you know, at Upworthy, you know, that's the kind of content that we do. And it's why, uh, you know, as opposed to you know, the average for the top 50 websites of about 700 social actions per piece of content, at Upworthy, you know, we see an average of about uh, 31,000. 31,000 likes, shares, and comments. And that's what happens when you can tap into people's passion. It's kinetic. It's very different from, I'm sharing this because it's kind of interesting. It's, I'm sharing this because I care about it, because I want you to see, about, to, you to see it, because I want you to pay attention to it. And so when we ask our, 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 our folks, like, 
why are you sharing things? Uh, they say, because I want to draw attention to something important. And it really has this different kind of resonance. So you can see that in the leaderboards of the most shared content uh, in March as well. You know, stuff that matters is actually kind of lighting up the leaderboards. And it's not our usual idea of what viral content looks like. It's not just entertaining. It actually speaks to something bigger. You know, this was a video uh, about a woman talking about, you know, what it's like to be black and be faced with the normal standards of beauty. Not what we think of as a smash viral hit, but it was. And it was because it spoke to something bigger. And so what I want to do now is show you three, uh, you know, three clips and ask you to see if you can figure out which of these uh, you know, did well online. So, you know, the first one features uh, a comedian talking about uh, having cerebral palsy. I'll show you a little clip. I didn't get the part. <laughs> Sherry Brown got the part. I went racing to the head of the theater department, crying hysterically, like someone shot my cat, to ask her why. And she said it was because they didn't think I could do the stunts. I said, excuse me, if I can't do the stunts, neither can the character. <laughs> this, this was a part that I was literally born to play, and they gave it, they gave it to a non-palsy actress. College was imitating life. So that's one clip. Let's take a look at another. This is an ad uh, for the Rainforest Network about how to help protect the rainforest. One day, you see that the rainforest is being destroyed at a staggering rate of 32 million acres a year. That's the equivalent of one football field every 78 seconds. You feel bad, angry, guilty. You've been apathetic for too long. You want to do something about it. You must do something about it. Well, this is what you're not going to do. And let's round this out with uh, a real doozy. This is a 12-minute French film about uh, gender roles with subtitles. Is this viral fodder? Bonjour, cher petit monsieur. Ah, bonjour, Madame Rasquin. Et donc, il faudrait quand même penser à trouver une date hein, pour la réunion de copropriété. Non, mais vous m'avez vu un peu là, toute sa plante mm -hmm. La graine de partout. Et qui c'est qui les renvoie ah, oui, Et qui oui. c'est qui les coupe Hein ah, oui. <laughs> so the answer is, all three of these did incredibly well. Millions of views, hundreds of thousands of shares, and it's because all three of them tapped in to some bigger purpose, and they elevated people out of their day to day. But the other reason that they did well was that they were all actually quite engaging. And at Upworthy, you know, we know that you are what you measure. And so how do you actually measure whether we're actually successfully engaging folks around this content? If it's a war for attention, if every second is incredibly precious, how do we actually figure out if we're reaching people with content that they love? And our answer to that is a new metric that we call attention minutes, which basically helps us follow readers through after they click to see how they're actually engaging with the content. Do they, do they love it or not? And uh, what we do is we basically you know, watch, watch how they're engaging on the site. Are they there, or is it just a bot? Is it a tab that's open in someone's browser? Did they walk away from their computer? We cut all of that out, and we use that as a guide to tell ourselves whether we're really actually delivering something that people love, or whether it's just something that we love. And uh, when you look at content through this lens, really interesting things start to emerge. So let's look at those three videos again. And first, let's look at them through the lens of page views. So if we look at them in page views terms, you see that those three you know, do quite well in the millions of page views. Um, and, and we threw a couple other pieces up there uh, that are more standard viral fodder. It's Denzel Washington uh, and a clip uh, from YouTube that was sort of a, a YouTube prank. So you can start to see some difference between these things. But when you look at it through the lens of attention minutes, you see this whole different separation. And you see that some of these pieces of content were far more engaging than others. And when you layer on whether they share or not, it gives you even more of a sense that when you speak to something powerful, it actually really resonates in an enormous way. So the 12-minute French film with subtitles, not anyone's idea of what viral content looks like, actually turns out to have been incredibly successfully engaging. 
So I want to close out today with uh, a really unlikely, quite difficult uh, you know, piece of content that doesn't fit anyone's idea of what viral looks like. This is a piece of a documentary that a young man was filming about uh, the issue of, si of childhood sexual molestation. And he's talking to his father about uh, being molested by his father's brothers. If I had gotten the help that I should have had, and someone explained to me that both of my brothers were really sick and that they had a disease and that they could do this again, they wouldn't have been seen within miles of you ever. So when we found this, uh, you know, we honestly weren't sure if it would connect with a large audience. But we put it up and immediately uh, the numbers started going through the roof. Millions of people tuned in. And not only that, but actually the Kickstarter that this guy had started to, to fund his film um, went into overdrive. It went from $15,000 to $157,000 almost overnight. And a few days later, we actually got this video in our inbox. I'll show you a piece of it. Kickstarter's blowing up right now. Ruining the This is so incredible. <laughs> this is so cool. Thank you, Upworthy, for taking this and sharing it with the world. And thank you, every single human being that is taking a moment to look at this video and share their emotions and their feelings and their experiences with me because it gives me the strength to keep going and it reminds me of the power of this movement and this film and what we're doing. So thank you. So that's the power of purpose. And uh, you know, it's nice that he thanks Upworthy, but if you listen carefully, that's not really who he's thanking. He's thanking this huge community of people who came together to give him a voice, to lift up his message, and to help him actually make some change. And to me, that's what it's all about. It's about providing people with content that lifts them out of their day to day, that connects them with purpose, um, and that's so engaging that they have to share it with everyone they know. And so when you're asking the question, how do I get people to pay attention to my piece of content? Let me suggest, if you want uh, to stand out, you have to stand for something. Thank you.